What's up, YouTube? Uh, it's good to be back. I took the weekend off. My wife had a bachelorette weekend, so I needed to stay home with the babe, watch him, and I wasn't able to get up at 4 a.m. and go work out. So I just took a break from uh, doing the videos and uh, just allow yourself to take breaks when you need to. Um, also got under the weather this weekend. I'm here today which is good, just keep keep going. Know that your identity depends on you showing up each day. So if you're trying to become a gym goer, and that's gonna be your new identity, um, even if you go for 10 minutes, you're, you're establishing, you're solidifying that you are a person that goes to the gym every day, no matter what. That's gonna help you so much in the end of the day. Um, it's not about <clears throat> how much you get done in each session, it's just about making it a habit right because uh, growth and change happens over a long period of time over consistent action and um, small improvements applied over time so <clears throat> allow yourself to apply that principle to your life whatever it is that you want to do make sure uh, if it's something that's daily that you're getting it in each day no matter what and if you can allow yourself a shorter period of time to do that that's good I like to use a principle um, for sickness or for any unforeseen circumstances um, it's a green light yellow light red light um, so a green light day is a day when I, I feel good there's no issues um, I might have a slight injury or I might have a, a slight cold or something um, <clears throat> nothing to be too concerned about so I'm gonna go to the gym I'm gonna get my normal routine done yellow light day um, it's maybe a day like today where I uh, feeling a little bit sick kind of dizzy not that good um, maybe you have stress at work or <clears throat> some things that are weighing you down and you know you're distracted um, still go to the gym on the yellow light day um, just know that you can kind of take your foot off the gas a little bit or you can not go as long and that's okay um, because if you go on a day that should be a yellow light day and you treat it like a green light day and you're a little bit sick you're gonna get sick you're gonna get really sick or if you're stressed oftentimes now it depends you can you can apply your own judgment to that situation but if you're stressed in a way that you shouldn't be going to the gym and, and and applying more stress to your to your body to your physic physical form then when you do that I'm sorry I had the pre-workout and I'm like burping it up so that's why I'm doing this all the time forgive me um, but yellow light day yeah you apply your own judgment is what it comes down to and then a red light day let's say you have a death in your immediate family um, you're really sick like like in bed sick and you get up and you are like gonna pass out because you're so dizzy you're throwing up doing something like that um, so allow yourself that kind of coding right to determine do I get up do I still do my routine um, it's okay and you should you know we're all human no one's perfect no one's um, free of illness so you should allow yourself those um, those times when you need to recover or just take it a little easy and that's okay so <clears throat> cover that what I want to talk about today is a uh, business small business ownership we got a new book so I started a new book I'm super stoked about it um, I've had this on my list for a long time it's called the e-myth um, I don't know why I didn't purchase it I think when I hear e-myth, I think of electronic because I don't know, that's, I'm a millennial, so when you grow, grow up in that era, E usually stands for, especially if it's abbreviated, usually stands for electronic. And I didn't want to believe that um, the, you couldn't do a business online. So I, I made all these assumptions about what the book was going to be about, and it turns out I'm like completely 
completely wrong about it. Anyway, I love this book so far. I'm like five chapters in, which is not that much, but already I can tell like there's really good principles in it that you can apply and um, some some very convicting things for business owners and for myself where I'm like, holy sh! I've done this. I've and I'm doing this, and I need to be very, very cognizant of how I approach um, creating a business and how I work in, in that business or on that business. So, in the beginning, he introduces three concepts. And so, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm not even gonna call this a series, but you guys know me, I like to rant. So, when I get on the video, I'm just gonna kind of uh, abbreviate what I've learned from the book and kind of share with you how I'm working through it. So in the beginning, he introduces three characters. Uh, the first character is the entrepreneur. This is the person that is the dreamer. They have big ideas. They are. They have a vision for the future. Um, they are innovating. They are thinking about how to do things better and different. The second person is a manager and they are creating order they are organizing tasks they are um, managing the calendar right so they're just there to make things pretty and then there is the technician and the technician is the the expert in the operations okay so say the example used in the book is like you're really good at baking pies and you love baking pies that's a lethal combo right you hear it all the time if you follow um, any entrepreneurial any small business thing on Instagram or you listen to Gary Vee on YouTube or anything like that they say all the time <clears throat> if you're good at something and it's your passion you need to do that like go do that make it a business you're, you're gonna succeed because it's your passion right but in this book he talks about that's not always the case and the reason why is because what ends up happening is we we leave a job and we <clears throat> we think oh finally I cannot be my own boss but these three characters exist in all of us so we each have an entrepreneur a manager and a technician and oftentimes they are not in balance with each other as they should be. So what ends up happening is we create a job for ourselves. <laughs> Gotta work on my ring finger strength. We create a job for ourselves where, um, yeah, I'm gonna open a business, I'm gonna put my heart and soul into it, I'm gonna make it awesome, I'm gonna treat my customers top notch, I'm gonna make the best pies in the world. Um, and when you start, you have that passion, right? Because you're like, this is awesome, I'm doing it myself. I'm getting the benefits for it. Over time, you realize you're overworked and you have to work a little bit more each day. And you have a complaint over here and you have to manage this. And you have to, little, you have to work a little bit more each day. And then it could be six months, it could be a year, it could be a couple years into it. You're overworked, you're working so hard and so long that you don't have time for managing you don't have time for the entrepreneurial side you've created a job and worse you've created like a job that's way worse than what you had before because you might be working 12 14 16 hours a day and you might be working on the weekends and you might not you still might not be able to pay the bills and why is that <clears throat> because you you've taken on three roles and <clears throat> because of how you set your business up you devoted all your time to becoming the technician. You've created a job for yourself. So you have less than 5% to do entrepreneurial work and you have less than 10% to do managerial work. And those are key, key ingredients in creating a successful business. Now, I can play this, <coughs> sorry guys, I can play this logic out. <coughs> I think I know like how it's gonna shift and where it's going. <clears throat> sorry this is like disgusting if you watch my videos straight through I love you I say this every time 
and you just dealt with me packing up some some ish so I appreciate you for handling it and not grabbing your phone or your tablet or your your PC and pressing pause and exiting and saying this guy's disgusting anyway totally off topic uh, that's kind of where I left off in the book and I'm thinking like oh my gosh how many of us who get into business end up just creating a job and like a worse job than what we would have had if we just kept a job we get passionate about hey business is the answer like do something you're passionate about pursue it you're good at what you do why not apply that and, and reap the benefits right and oftentimes it's like you hear these stories about small business owners who are way overworked and they hate it and you know they it, at best they get five years in they quit and they never want to get in business again like they just have sour taste in their mouth and they're and it was like the worst time in their lives <clears throat> and I know someone who I know a few business owners who if I think about it they've just created a job like if they were to leave the business or hire someone to do what they do the business itself kind of loses its luster um, at least that's how they perceive it so this is interesting as I'm reading through it and I and I don't want to be like hey I have the answers now I read this book but it's interesting to think about how we can apply these principles toward real businesses and see if um, we can make them actual businesses right where you're working on them and not in them so I'm excited I'm only five chapters in I'm excited to go through this journey with you guys I hope you are too um, let me know your thoughts about that idea manager technician entrepreneur and in your day-to-day -day, let me know what percentage of each do you think you fall into are you coming up with ideas the majority of the day working on uh, your vision for the future so <clears throat> So entrepreneur is like future-minded, managing is the past, managing, like you're looking at the past, and then um, technician, you're in the present. So let me know what's, what percentages you are. Make sure it adds up to 100%. If, you, if you're any good at math, you should be. So in the comments below, let me know. And I know you're watching. So you, you gotta just like grab it real It just doesn't take long. Just say, you can say E, 10%, M, 20%, T, 70%. Just do something like simple like that. I would really appreciate it. And again, you're, if you're at the end of the video, I love you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one, guys. Hit the like button. Peace.